Hey everyone, welcome back to Taking Care of Business. My name is Mike Katz, Executive Vice President of T-Mobile for Business. And if you've listened to our previous episodes, we're gonna switch things up a little bit. Uh, instead of focusing all on COVID-19 small business closures, I'm gonna be talking to business disruptors across the industry. And I am more than excited about my first guest, starting with MLB legend and future Hall of Fame inductee, CC Sabathia who's been taking care of business on the field and off. On the field is a 19 season MLB vet, member of the 3000 Strikeout Club. He's a Cy Young Award winner, a World Series champ, a six time All-Star, including in his last season. And then off the field, uh, he's tearing it up as a podcast host, a podcast host, excuse me, an entrepreneur and a huge philanthropist. So I'm so excited, CC, to have you here. Thank you for joining us. Uh, I really, really appreciate it. Um, I thought I'd start, CC. I, I know you just started a new clothing line uh, with Roots of Flight mm -hmm. in honor of uh, black baseball icons. And I'd love, to, I'd love for you just to tell us about it. How, how's it going? Why did you start it? What does it represent for you? Yeah, so, uh, you know, I, I got a chance to partner up with Roots of Flight. Um, and, you know, this being the 100th year of when the Negro League started, um, I thought it would be really awesome to be able to put some pieces together to kind of tell the story, you know, to help tell, this, you know, a couple of the stories of uh, the Negro Leagues. Um, so, uh, I, you know, I'm very close with Bob Kendrick that, that he's the president of the Negro League Museum. Um, I got a chance to be really close with Buck O'Neill um, when he was still alive early in my playing career. And the Negro Leagues just means so much to me because, you know, without them starting that league and, you know, forcing MLB to integrate, um, I wouldn't be here today. So. Um, you know, I thought it'd be awesome to, to, to partner up. Uh, Roots of Fight is a, is a dope clothing line. They tell some cool stories. Um, they have some, they already have some icons. They already have Jackie Robinson. They already have Muhammad Ali. Um, they have Allen Iverson. They have Maya Angelou. Um, so they already have some, uh, some awesome and impactful, um, you know, black icons. So I just thought it was a perfect marriage. And, you know, uh, people have been taking to it a lot. The players love it. And uh, most of the time, whatever the players wear, and if the players love it, then, then the public's going to get into it. And uh, me and my wife, we knew that. And, and it's, uh, it's been a blessing. It's been a lot of fun, um, you know, partner up, it, partnering, partnering up. And hopefully we can just continue to tell more stories, not just Jackie Robinson, but uh, Cool Papa Bell and Bullet Joe Rogan and, you know, my favorite, Satchel Paige. So um, I'm looking forward to, to expanding more and, you know, telling more of these Negro League stories. Yeah, when, when you and your wife were looking at some of these opportunities, how, how important was it for you to find a business opportunity like this that both has, you know, incredible commercial opportunities for you, but also has a big th uh, philanthropic cause like this one does? Yeah, uh, it, it, that's always a huge uh, part of, of, of us making decisions. But, you know, I think the biggest thing for us is it has to be authentic to us. It has to be something that we really care about and we can really get behind and get into and, uh, you know, the Negro Leagues is, is obviously a perfect thing for us. And, you know, the proceeds going back to the museum and, and you know, a portion of the pro proceeds for going forward will go to, you know, the estates of, of the players. So, um, you know, that, that, that's always a huge part of it, the, the, the giving back and the uh, philanthropic part, I guess. Yeah. Well, what, especially right now, I mean, because there's such – uh, an important national conversation that's happening, um, you know, with, with Black Lives Matter and with everything that's happened post uh, the murder of George Floyd. Um, you know, I, I, um, I, I got to think it's so, it's so important to be able to tell these stories but so that we understand our history, uh, understand the kinds of things that uh, all those people that you just talked about, Satchel Paige, Josh Gibson, people like that, that they went through that people may not understand so we don't repeat those things over again. Yeah, for sure. And, and for me, I just want people to know, you know, with the Negro Leagues, um, you know, just getting back to that, that, you know, I think a lot of people think that it was like backyard baseball and like they were playing in, you know, you know, little stadiums and, and things like that. No, these people were, they were selling out, you know, packing stadiums and, you know, going on tours, you know, Satchel Page had a plane and, you know, he would take his all-stars on the road and play against Bob Feller's all-stars. And, you know, so people don't really know these stories about, how the the Negro Leagues was was, was driving black business in, in these towns and you know Birmingham, Alabama and, and you know Kansas City and different places where you know black players weren't allowed to, to play in the MLB, but they had Negro League teams there and you know it was just the games were just as great, uh, probably even more entertaining 
and it was driving black businesses, you know, at that time. So I, I definitely, you know, want to continue to, to keep telling these, those type of stories. I mean, the, the country is kind of at a tipping point right now. And, and for us to be able to tell these stories, um, you know, like you said, and not have history repeat itself is very important right now. Yeah, thank you for doing it. I think it's I think it's so important because you know um, you know I, I think the the number one thing that will start to I believe start to drive real change is people uh, understanding these the the situations. Like we've been so fortunate within our company where we've had this this big dialogue uh, that's caused a lot of understanding, a lot of understanding of what colleagues of ours go through on a daily basis. Uh, that many of us may just not have uh, fully understood or fully appreciated. So I think the more that we can shine a spotlight on this um, and the more that we can recognize and reward people that, you know, quite frankly, uh, through amazing playing careers, didn't, didn't get the, um, you know, the, the spotlight shined enough on them is, is so amazing. So I, I just think it's great that you're doing it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you know, kind of spe speaking of this transition from you know long playing career into you know now civilian life you know run, running businesses you know uh, i always i always feel embarrassed making this comment to uh, you know someone like you especially you know but i know for me like i i uh, i played baseball a lot all the way up up into college and you know so many things that um i learned in my experience playing baseball have carried over and been an important part of my professional career and as you've made this transition from playing uh, into uh, into business, like what what are some of the big things that you've taken from you know what you learned in baseball in your playing career to, to have success off the field? I think the biggest thing that I've learned um, is just having patience. I think as a baseball player, you know, I mean, especially me as a younger player, I, I think I feel like I was so talented. I just was not patient enough. Whether that was was in within games or you know seasons or my routine, um, you know, just trying to figure out everything. Being so young, I just didn't have patience and. You know, you know, this is, you know, the clothing line and things that we're doing with documentaries and things that we, we have going on. This is not the first wave of businesses me and my wife have, have, have been into. You know, we, we've done clothing lines. She had a, a um, phone case called a tie light that she was doing. So we have, we've, you know, we've kind of been into this, you know, these businesses before. And I think we weren't patient enough, you know, before. And, you know, now us being retired and being able to, to sit back and really, have opportunities come to us and not chasing things. And like I said earlier, doing things that we really love and are passionate about. And, and when, you, when you're doing things like that, the work comes easy because you want to do it. So um, I think that's been the biggest thing is, is just being patient with all of this stuff. What, what, um, what have you enjoyed the most so far out of all the things that you've been, because you were doing a ton of different things. What's, what's been the most interesting and enjoyable? Um, I think that the documentary side of things has is, is been, uh, a lot of fun, you know, I, I'm, I'm doing one about my life um, that should be coming out um, hopefully soon. Um, I got a couple in the works, um, you know, one um, about Black Aces, you know, it's been 15 um, African-American pitchers that have won 20 games in the American League and I want to tell, in, American League, in, the, in the MLB, and I want to tell those stories. So, um, you know, those are two of the things that I'm super passionate about and, um, you know, there's a couple other things I can't announce yet, but you know, I'm, I'm excited. Well, I know, um, I know you're doing a podcast mm -hmm. um, and it's uh, R R2C2. So, I mean, the most important question is, has Star Wars tried to come after you for that name yet? Of course, uh, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, tell, tell me about the podcast. Like, how did that get started and what, what are you guys doing? What are you talking about on there? Yeah, so uh, uh, R2C2 is a podcast me and Ryan Rucco started in 2017. Um, and, you know, me and, me and Rucco, um, met in 2009 when I first came to the, uh, Yankees. Um, he's, he did the interviews in, in the, in the clubhouse for the scoreboard. And we just kind of bonded over, you know, sports and, uh, music. And, you know, at the time, um, the Lakers were in the finals. I remember we would have conversations all the time about, you know, the, the Lakers and basketball. And we just kind of grew a friendship from there. We have mutual friends. So we're in a couple of group chats. And uh, we just decided, you know, we thought it'd be cool to, to, to start a, a, a podcast. You know, obviously I know his history and, you know, his background being in radio and he, you know, he calls the Nets, he calls um, the Yankee games, you know, he calls a lot of WNBA and NBA games. So I know he's great and he, and he can carry the conversation. Uh, he does all the research. I just kind of come in and, 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 you know, throw my little two cents in. But uh, the, the thing about 
uh, R2C2 and the reason why I think it works so well is that me and Ryan grew up totally different, you know, op opposite ends of the scale. Obviously, you know, me growing up in, in the hood in Vallejo and him, you know, growing up in the suburbs out here, but we have so much in common. It, it's the weirdest thing. So we, you know, we can bounce things off each other. We always have great conversations offline. So to be able to, to bring our friends on and, and you know, have a podcast, uh, it makes it easy and, and it's a lot of fun. How have you found the, just the business of podcasts? I mean, it's always cool when you can start something that you just kind of enjoy doing anyway, but like, how's the business, the business of podcasting going for you? You know what? It's been going pretty good because from the beginning, you know, we started the podcast at, at the Players' Tribune and we owned it right away. And, and you know, that's a, you know, I didn't know at the time, but that was a big thing. So we, we started the Players' Tribune. We went to Uninterrupted for a little while, which is great. You know, they grew our brand big time. And now we're, we're at the Ringer. Um, with with Bill Simmons, we have a bigger audience. Um, you know, it's right on Spotify. So, um, you know, it's just growing bigger and bigger and kind of organically. And, you know, I think our end game would be to have a TV show, you know, uh, kind of like Jalen Jacoby type of thing, but a little more sillier because our personality is a little more out there. So, um, but, but, that, but that would be, you know, something I think that we would look towards, you know, keep building and being patient and, and not rushing this thing and kind of go, uh, growing our, our fan base organically. Um, I'm sure something that you guys have talked a lot about is this um, kind of unusual baseball season that we're in right now. Um, you know, what are, what are your thoughts when you like, especially, I mean, for you, cause you were just playing last year in, the, in a normal season, you know, what, like when you see what the players and the league is going through right now, um, like what, what, what do you think? Like, how do you think it's going? I, I, well, my immediate thought is I retired at the right time, <laughs> <laughs> but I think, uh, I think it's going as good as it can. You know, I think that they're, they're trying really hard to, you know, put on a season to basically entertain us. You know, I mean, they're playing in front of no fans, you know, they got that kind of that noise going on in the stadium. Um, so, you know, it, it kind of really is just for us, for the fans, for us to enjoy. So, um, you know, I, I think as a player, though, I, th I feel like it would be rough. Um, baseball is a tough sport to play. Um, and then, you know, you, know you, want, you want guys to travel around all summer, um, basically playing a sport where you fail seven out of ten times and then stay in a room, locked in a room, you know, for 10, 12 days at a time. Um, you know, with the, I think the NBA did, a, did it right with, with the bubble. You know, those guys can go fishing, they're golfing, they're hanging out with each other. You know, they got restaurants they can go to. Um, so that makes it a little more easier for, for your mental health as an athlete. You know, you, got, you need that break. You need that, re, you know, something to do to take your mind off of your actual sport. So, um, you know, for me, I think it would be tough. You know, last year I was, at, I was at the end of it, you know, just with the travel in general. But, you know, being able to – not being able to go out and leave your room um, on the road, I feel like it would be a tough thing. Yeah. Well, um, I, I'll correct you on one thing because – at least at T-Mobile Park, uh, we have fans. They're just two-dimensional cardboard ones. And in <laughs> fact, I, I have like the best seat in the house. I'm literally like four seats over from home plate. So uh, it's, been, it's been amazing. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's been so funny to see these stadiums filled up with a bunch of cardboard cutouts. Uh, right? And that's fine. I like the cardboard cutouts. I don't mind it. But it's just like when I'm watching uh, like a, a game on TV and they have like the fake digital fans there. Like, what you, like, <laughs> I know the stadium's empty. Like, don't put those fans up there to try to, like, fool me. Like, we know nobody's in there. Like, we don't need that visual. Like, yeah. It was, it, was it was probably recorded, like, four months before that. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, um, it's, it's a crazy time. I'm, I, I sure I'm glad that, you know, we, we just crossed over this halfway point because it felt like early on in the season. It, it, I wasn't sure if, if we were going to make it we're going to make it this far. So it's been, uh, it's been good to see that they've been able to keep things on track and, you know, the, the baseball has been pretty good so far, you know, obviously, you know, I'm here in Seattle, so we've got a, a young, a young team that's, that's uh, struggling through the season with a couple of bright spots, but um, I'm, I'm really glad that, uh, you know, despite COVID and despite the challenges, they've been able to keep the season going. I think the country needed it. Uh, I got a couple of good friends up there. I'm really close with D Gordon. Um, I know Justin Dunn really well uh, from being out here. And I played with Justin Sheffield. So I've been watching the Mariners a lot. So I think they got a, they got a good young core. I think they'll be good in a couple of years. Um, but the competition I knew was going to be great. You get those guys out on the field, um, 
the baseball is going to be good. They're going to show up. They're going to play hard. So it's been a lot of fun to hear, like, the ball off the bat. Like, I'm an offensive guy. I don't really care for, like, one nothing games. I don't want to see, like, a pitching duel. I'd rather see a 15-12 game and a lot of home runs. So to hear, like, when guys really catch one and hear it on the TV uh, is awesome. Yeah, it is. It's a di- it's di- it is. It's a different sound. It's it's fun. It's fun to hear that. And then as a fan, it's fun to hear the players talking because you don't use you never hear that on TV. And even when you're there in person, it's hard to hear that just because all the crowd noise yeah. and you actually hearing the, the players talking, interacting. And I, I love the moment. Um, and it, I guess this would have happened even if uh, COVID wasn't going on. I love the moment. Um, I don't know if you saw this like last week when uh the Dodgers were playing the Mariners and both uh, the, both the Seeger brothers hit home runs yeah, and they were yeah. walking by each other and you could see them chatting each other up as they walked by. It was a really cool moment. Yeah, that is all. That was an awesome moment. Like for me though, because I, I used to talk a lot on the field, I think like the other team actually hearing what I could say would probably start a lot of fights. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. It's actually good that I'm retired because I'll probably have us fighting every night, to be honest. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was crazy to see uh, in COVID a, a couple bench-clearing uh, incidents already. Man, yeah, because maybe you can hear everything. Good. You can hear everything that's going on. So, like, if you're on the bell or even if you, if you listen to the game and you hear somebody hit a home run, you can tell it's gone because you can hear the dugout. You can hear the guy screaming, oh. So, if you really listen to the game, like, you don't want to hear it as a pitcher. You know what I'm saying? Like you don't want to you don't want to hear the other team like getting hyped. So I think, you know, it, it makes it it makes the competition a little more uh, it, it makes the guys go a little harder, it makes the competition a little better because you don't want to get show shown up by the other team. Yeah. Uh, um hey, I, I could t- I I could talk on this topic literally all day with you. One one of the th- one of the things that I wanted to ask you about though is um you know, you, you talked about all of the stuff you're doing, the clothing line, the podcast, the documentaries, a bunch of secret stuff you, you uh, like, I'm still trying to pry out of you. Um, so many, you see so many stories about uh, athletes having a difficult time transitioning from the, their, their playing career into, uh, you know, into the uh, post playing career. Like, how, how have you found success in that? What are some of the things that have been keys for you that, you know, you know, could be helpful for other players as they're considering, you know, make, making that transition for themselves? You know what I mean? I think just me having, you know, a strong base, like my family around me, um, you know, my wife, my mom, um, my kids, you know, I just kind of dive into that. And I do that anyway in the off season, you know, like having so many kids, like as soon as the season's over, I, w- I would always use my family to just get my mind off of everything. Whether, I mean, you know, not even as soon as the season's over. Whether I pitch good or bad, leaving the stadium, as soon as I see my kids, like, it's over. So I was always able just to kind of switch it off. Um, And to be able to to do that forever now feels great, to be honest. I'm in, like, a great routine. Um, You know, I'm I'm working out. I'm eating better. Um, But but for me, to like, I feel like I cheated a little bit because physically, I feel like I could have retired after 2014. Just the way my body felt, just the way my knee felt, my arm, my shoulder. Um, and, and mentally, after 2018, I feel like I was done. So, like, I, you know, the last couple of years for me, it's just been icing on the cake and, and being able to play and, um, you know, play as long as I did, get the 3,000 strikeouts. Um, you know, it's been a blessing and amazing. But anytime after 2014, I feel like I could have retired and been fine, you know. Um, so getting to play those extra five years um, was a blessing. So. Uh, right now, I feel great. You know, I'm I'm, exci- I'm excited, you know, happy with my decision um, and feeling really good. You know, my knee feels great. Um, I'm able to run, jump, do things with my family that I w- hadn't been able to do in the past, you know, 12 to 15 years. So um, I'm excited for what, what's next to come. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of us, uh, including I'm sure a lot of people in New York, that we're glad you didn't make that decision in 2014. Um, <laughs> what, what you know? What are some, what are some things that you think that uh, players uh, or people just generally can do to kind of get themselves prepared for either life off the field or their next kind of business or career move that they want to make? Like, what were some of the things that you did that prepared you for that, um, and or advice you'd give to other people how they could prepare themselves? Um, I, I think I think you need to start preparing early, you know, for, for whatever. I mean, definitely athletes, you know, um, you know, start getting the other things off the field. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be clothing lines or things like that. You know, philanthropy work, anything that you can really dive dive into 
um, and really just take your mind off of, you know, playing. Playing a, playing a professional sport, obviously you get to play kids' games, you know, and get paid for it, but it's still tough and it's, it's mentally challenging. So, you know, you need something else to, you know, get your mind off of the game anyway. I remember, you know, my, the, the most interesting guy I ever played with was D.D. Gregorius. This guy does everything. I mean, from computer gra graphics to – uh, to drawing, to music, to everything. And he's just, you know, like he's, gonna, he's no problem retiring because he's going to have a, a bunch of different things that he wants to be able to be passionate about and be able to get into. So, um, you know, I think you, you, you definitely need to have, you know, different things that you can really dive into and, and uh, but start preparing early, you know, whatever, whatever field you're in, um, start preparing, you know, early for retirement, for sure. Um, you know, I, I'm sure that, you get all kinds of opportunities, people approaching you about uh, opportunities, investments, you know, things like that. Like, how do you, how do you evaluate what you're going to do and what you're not going to do? You know what? I'm actually uh, a part of a, a really cool group, uh, the Petrikov company. Um, and, and they have a bunch of athletes. And uh, uh, honestly, whatever I get pitched, I send to them. You know, they comb through it and they do a great job of, you know, either thumbs up and thumbs down. It's just that simple. Um, and, and, you know, again, like I said, if it's something that I'm into or product that I use or something that I'm passionate about, you know, nine times out of 10, I'll invest if they give me the, thumb, the thumbs up. Anything, um, anything that you've gotten pitched that you didn't do that you regret? I have to think about it, but, but yeah, there, there's been different things for sure. It wasn't zoom. Was it? Cause that, that would have been about I, 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 I feel like. I feel like Skype dropped the ball on everything. Like this should, we should be doing this on Skype now. Zoom just kind of took over. <laughs> uh, I think a lot of us wish that we got pitched on Zoom about a year ago. It's unbelievable. Right? Um, <laughs> well, who would ever thought that we would need it this much? Yeah. Or, or going forward, like everything now is going to be Zoom. Yeah. You know, like nobody's going to be really going. To, I don't feel like people are going to be going to the office or doing things if you can just Zoom it right here, you know, and, and get meetings done right, right wherever you are. Yeah, I think you're. I think you're right. I know. I know. For us, uh, the way that we worked will always be different. Um, and look, I think there's actually some silver linings in that. I think um, you know, the world's the world becomes a smaller place when you can use things like this, and it's um, it's easier. It's easier to connect with uh, more people during the day. It's also um, you know, you know, you don't have to jump on airplanes to go meet with people, which you know has environmental impacts and everything else. So I think there's. I think there's some real benefits that are coming from it. For sure. And, and like guys like me or people, athletes, whatever, can hop, just use their phone. It's literally, it's so easy to use. And I think that's, what, that's what's going to you know, change everything going forward. Yeah. How do you think it's going to change baseball going forward? The Zoom or, or just COVID and everything? Well, I, I, guess, I guess both, you know, is, is uh, you know, because they've had to change the, the way they're playing this year. Are there, th are there parts of it that will continue going forward, do you think? I, I, I kind of hope so. I mean... You know, I kind of like putting the runner on second base um, after, what, the 10th or 11th inning? Yeah. Uh, nobody wants to play 18 innings. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, <laughs> I used to always be on the bench screaming, we don't get paid for extra. Somebody hit a home run, let's go home. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I kind of like that. You know, and then you save arms and, you know, when some guy come, you know, comes up, set, pitches four great innings, you know, but you got to send them down because you're in the f 15th inning and now you need arms and different things like that. So, you know, kind of saving the bullpen, I think, with that with that runner at second base. I kind of like the seven inning double headers, too. Um, that's something that we, we grew up on in the minor leagues. But, man, you could do that on a Sunday and have every Monday off. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you can you can change a lot of things around, um, you know, if you get players used to it and, and you start. You know, these seven inning double headers, I think these players have no problem doing them. Yeah. What do you, th what do you think about in terms of like um, the way that teams and individuals prepare for the season? I was talking to a coach that I know, uh, a basketball coach I know uh, yesterday, and he was saying one of the things that's been um, uh, helpful for them is they used to, you know, bring all the kids in every, every morning for, for team meetings in the, in the facility, and now they're doing everything via video conference. They're actually getting to spend more time uh, with the kids talking about as a college coach so he's talking about like both school work as well as uh, practice and, and workouts and everything else is that is that is that a thing do you think in in pro sports as well I don't know about pro sports but definitely high school and college um I mean pro sports is, I mean you football is a little different because 
you know, they're always want they, they always need to check in. There's always meetings and stuff like that. But baseball, I don't know if that's gonna fly. Like, I mean, I think in the off season, you know, maybe once or twice you check in with the with the manager or maybe you know the strength coach. But but you know, having zooms all the time in baseball is not that's the, probably not gonna happen. But it, but it, I think it will it will definitely change for football. You know, and those guys having to come in maybe for an early meeting, maybe you have that on Zoom now, and they come in at one o'clock instead of nine o'clock. They have that, you know what I'm saying? They had a nine o'clock a.m. meeting, so um, maybe that'll change for them. But baseball is just a little more. You got a lot more freedom, so uh, it'll be hard to get baseball players to be checking in that much. A lot of the guys give their wrong number and address at the end of the season, so the team can't even contact them. <laughs> Uh, well, in fairness, it's a long season, so you guys are seeing it. It is. Yeah, we play every day, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, we check in every day. Yeah. Well, hey, Cece, I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you joining us for this and, and taking your time to do it. I think it's so important for people to hear from disruptors like you, especially people that have made this incredibly successful transition from a, a you know, Hall of Fame career into uh, what you're doing across multiple businesses and philanthropy. It's, it's really... Um, you know, I think it's really motivating. It's really inspirational. So I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. Um, it's, you know, I, I can't wait to follow uh, more of what you're doing in the podcast. I want to see the documentaries and I can't wait to hear about the, uh, the secret project. So thank you so much. We'll be supporting you. And uh, I, I can't, I can't tell you how much we appreciate you joining us today. No problem. Thanks for having me. I appreciate everything. And, and uh, hopefully I can, you know, turn this into a successful uh, second chapter. So thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you. And we'll see everybody soon in uh, our next episode, Taking Care of Business. Bye-bye.